Welcome back. So in our Nobody special series, we've talked about trust and passion thus far. Now, one of the personal stories that intrigues me greatly is it's just a short little blurb in one of the Gospels. It's a brief encounter that Jesus has with a centurion. Now Jesus heals the centurion's servant and, and he does it from a distance. And amazing as that is, that's not the that's not the thing that makes me put the brakes on and stop. Uh, it, it's Jesus' reaction to this man's reaction. The man so trusted the power of Jesus that he told him to just speak the word and he, he knew that his servant would be healed. He trusted in the power of the name, the word of Jesus. He, he trusted the authority of Jesus' word. And in that moment, Jesus' chin just dropped. Now, I don't know what makes your chin drop or what gets into you, but I remember a time years ago, my brother and I were out uh, fishing in the Gulf, and we were watching the birds, looking ahead of the boat just to see where the fish were at, to, to know where to to cast at. And, and all of a sudden, we see this giant fish about six feet long jump out of the water and roll over and flop in the walk back in the water and and he and I both at the same time just turned each other and our chins were both dropped as we're looking I, I tell you the truth I had to go home and look up what kind of fish it was because it was the first time I'd seen a tarpon and uh that was pretty cool but 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 this is Jesus we're talking about he could not believe his ears. He he just marveled. He was amazed. He was astonished. Think, this is Jesus. What in the creation of the world makes the Creator's chin drop? It was this man's bold faith, his trust in the name. He knew how authority worked, and he had seen or heard enough about Jesus to believe. He didn't need extra. He, he had seen enough. Yeah, sadly, I, I guess Jesus had gotten used to the lack of belief or faith that, that people had, even in his miraculous works. In this session, we're going to look into one of the disciples. Oh, you know the one. The one that, the one that uh, wouldn't just say what, he'd say whatever's on his mind. The one that would just step out of the boat, Simon Peter. Simon Peter wasn't having a stellar day the day he met Jesus. So let's read about that. Um, on one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked them to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and he talked to people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we told all night and, and took nothing. But at your word, I'll let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come, to come and help them. And they came and they filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. In verse 10, and so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to, to land, they, they left everything and they followed him. They followed Jesus. The first step to faith is to give Jesus a listen. It's interesting how the sermon on that day moved Peter to take a baby step in trusting Jesus, which then led him to being all in. For here on out, he would be bold. Jesus wouldn't rein him in too much because that bold characteristic would come in handy later. 
Jesus showed uh, he was truth through teaching and action. Peter heard the good words of Jesus on the beach that day. We don't even have the words from that sermon. We just heard he preached. But after all, Jesus spoke as one with authority, no doubt that spoke to him. But it was action on the water that day, catching all those fish which hooked him. Like the centurion, he had seen enough to believe. It wouldn't be long until he would testify that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we do learn here as well as other places, Jesus doesn't call us to blind faith. The teaching, the preaching, the miracles, just seeing what God was like in Jesus, God used all of this to draw men unto himself. And see, God wants us to find him, to know him. Of course, meeting uh, Jesus draws a reaction from men. Recognizing that God incarnate stood before him, Peter fell down on his knees in worship. And Peter's first bold move was the right one. You see, worship is the proper response upon meeting Jesus. His gut reaction was to tell Jesus that he needed to leave for he was a sinful man and Jesus was holy and he didn't need to be anywhere near him. It wasn't good for Jesus to be around a filthy, rotten sinner like Peter. And what Peter didn't realize that was that Jesus came to save just those kind of people and make them his people. Jesus came to seek and save the lost and he was bringing them on. Christ was recruiting people to fulfill his mission of disciples making disciples. And Jesus goes out in the highways and byways to get his nobodies and turns obedient people that will die to self into somebodies in his glorious kingdom. Jesus gives boldness to those who openly receive the truth. I don't know how many people were on the beach that day, but I know that they didn't all drop everything and follow Jesus. But Peter did. And we know that even then it was God that empowered him to drop it all and follow. We see it in his confession. Now look at Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20. When Peter confesses Jesus as Christ. In verse 13, Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Well, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Now, Simon Peter replied, You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Oh, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. In verse 18, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. Jesus tells Peter that it was God the Father that revealed this to him. The evidence of who Jesus was was out there. People could connect the dots. But when Jesus presses his disciples, Peter was the one old enough to blurt out what they all knew to be true. Jesus Christ was the son of the living God. There comes a time in life when people go from unbelievers to believers. They've seen enough to believe. Their belief causes a reaction. For Peter, it was likely the preaching of Jesus along with the major fish hall and, and of course some of the legend he'd already heard about Jesus that made him even pause and listen in the first place. God meets us all where we're at. I'm calling Peter and the centurion bold for their action but all they really did was say yes to Jesus. 
take time to go over the discussion questions with your group.